Hello, beautiful beings. Welcome to Shakti's Gift. I'm your host, Marigold Era, Ayurvedic wellness coach, creative force, and unschooling mother. For the past four years, I've been living my daily life according to Ayurvedic principles. Ayurveda, which means the science of life in Sanskrit, is a traditional system of medicine with roots in ancient India. It emphasizes a holistic approach to health by balancing the body, mind, and soul. It utilizes natural remedy, dietary guidelines, and lifestyle practices to promote well-being and prevent illness. I just want to be real clear with you guys, I'm not a doctor and I'm not a psychologist, but I am very passionate about this human experience and I'm all about being as sovereign as possible in our health. In this podcast, we will not only talk about Ayurveda, we will also meet a lot of wonderful people who are driven by the Shakti's gift of creativity, transformational force and feminine power. So you'll be in contact with a lot of amazing beings who are doing the work, they show up, even if it's freaking hard, and they evolve. Because that's what we do. Our human life is ever-changing. It is our nature to birth and bury new ideas and projects and to follow the seasons of our lives. So I invite you to grab yourself something to drink, get yourself comfortable, and let's dive deep into Shakti's gift. Welcome, welcome. I am so glad to be back with you today for another solo episode. This week, I'm going to talk about the story of conception according to Ayurveda and Tantra. I will also talk about the dynamic between the feminine and the masculine energy according to those two philosophy. You know, because in the Western world, people adopted writing early on and they decided to prioritize literacy as a way to pass down information. Uh, Most of our knowledge comes from books, whereas in the Eastern world, especially in Asia, people are passing down uh, information, stories, ritual, and wisdom through spoken languages rather than writing text. So folk tales, myths, legends, and religious teachings are often still passed down orally from elders to younger generations. And that is something that I really, really enjoyed about Ayurveda because our teachers were always telling us amazing stories. And this oral tradition and the storytelling were such a big part of my training. And it was just very fun and, you know, relatable. When people are telling stories, it's just a different way to integrate the knowledge. So when I entered my Ayurvedic class in early 2020, I heard the story of conception according to Ayurveda and Tantra. And when I heard that story, I felt like a deep sense of relief for some reason. I think because this story is not about, you know, male and female, but more about energies and dualities. Tantra and Ayurveda... They see gender as a spectrum where on one end you have like a very, very strong masculine and on the other end you have a very, very strong feminine. And then we just play in between those, you know, we play through that. And just that said, I just want to mention that Ayurveda also recognize the physical aspects of the body and the different reality between a male body and a female body. But energetically, think about the story this way. Every person in this mythology is you, no matter what is your gender. All right, so now let me tell you the story of conception as I was told by many of my teachers. So you can imagine being in front of the beautiful, a beautiful mountain in the Himalayas. And in this mountain, there is a cave. And in this cave, there is the god of all the gods, which the name is Shiva. Shiva was considered the first yogi. So you see this beautiful man who's sitting there in a deep meditative state. You can see that he has a broad chest since he's not wearing anything to cover the top of his body. He's got long and dark and flowy hair, and you observe a moon-shaped hat on his head. 
is wearing mala beads as a necklace. His skin is blue like ashes to remind you that everything and everyone that you know will eventually return to dust. He has a snake around his neck to remind you that death is always around the corner and that snake can bite you at any time. He is magnificent and profound and you see him in all his glory. So he's sitting there in his very masculine principles. He represents our consciousness, oneness, the underlying silence of being. He represents that which constantly witnesses, that which is unchanging, that which is all-knowing, and that which is ever-present everywhere. He's everything. He's the divinity. He's God, omniscient, all one. So there he is, sitting in total ecstasy, in total bliss, because he's one with everything. So he sat there in total contemplation for, like, who knows, like millions of years. And one day, a very mystical thing happens. He has this feeling. He gets this rumbling in his heart, and that rumble is showing him his discontentment. I'm not saying that he's upset, but he has like this curiosity growing inside of him and has Shiva is all one in his silent contemplation. He never had to experience anything like that or something like falling in love. He's just like, he just doesn't know those things. So he's starting to feel a pulse in, in this area of his chest, a pulse of creation, a pulse of evolution and from that impulse that desire to fall in love out of him came this incredible goddess shakti she's intoxicating so beautiful and powerful she's the life force the creativity itself she's a gentle devoted and nurturing goddess as she represents love she's also a fierce warrior And she's the symbol of fertility and renewal. So Shiva, he becomes completely drunk on her, like drooling in front of her. And before Shakti, he was stagnant, like almost dead-like. He was immobile. He couldn't move just up until this, this goddess came into his life because she represents this animated life this longing this desire and so shiva is so drunk on her that he, he he got to this point where he forgets himself in her he forgets that he's god and he just becomes some guy in total love with shakti and she just begins to move and churn her body as you know the feminine does sometimes and he gets even more drunk on her And as, as she's moving her hips, like she's moving from her womb space, and then comes out of her the five elements. So you got fire, water, earth, air, and ether. And these five elements become the tool that she uses to create everything else, from thoughts to rocks. You know, she's just creating everything. And of course, you and I, are also made of all of these elements. There's also one other part of that story that spoke to me in a very deep way because we could stop this, this story right there. The conception is there and like you got the god and you got the goddess and then from her like became all of those elements from which we're all created from. But there's this other part of the story that really deeply spoke to me. And it's when Shiva decided to express this great love to Shakti. And what she does is what actually spoke to me really deeply because she decided to challenge him, telling him that he cannot truly love her since he doesn't know her. And she tells him that he has to understand and accept all aspects of her nature to actually truly love her. So Shakti, to complete this challenge, <laughs> she decides to transform herself into Kali, which is her fierce and destructive aspect. So you can imagine Kali as like a very, very strong goddess, 
like with her tongue hanging out. She has multiple arms and weapons in every end. And on her neck lies a garland of skulls of all the demons that she has slayed. And you can see her, even like in some depiction, you can see Kali being shown standing or dancing on the inert form of Lord Shiva, who just lies there beneath her. This symbolized the dance of creation and destruction with Kali as the active dynamic force and Shiva as the passive transcendent consciousness. The figure of Kali conveys death, destruction, and the consuming aspect of reality. As such, she is also a forbidden thing, or even like death itself. In front of that creature, Shiva could have run, you know, when he saw her beloved, just turn like that. But that's not what he did at all. In fact, that's the moment where they both realize that the love that they have for each other is very, very strong. That's why their union is seen as an harmonious blending of the masculine and the feminine energy in this cosmic order. You know, they allow each other to be, truly be who they are. Now, that's a powerful story. And to be honest, it was very refreshing for me to listen to that story, like almost thrilling, I'll say. And I heard that story many, many times since. And every time I hear it, even now telling it, it fills me up with joy and compassion and a deep sense of being supported by the universe. Personally, I felt drawn to Kali even before I was studying Ayurveda. I always felt like she had something to teach me or something like that. I was, and I am still am very fascinated by her. She's raw and she's not afraid of chaos. And, you know, she's so powerful. I just like that she doesn't shy away from destruction as it is part of life. You know, everything lives and dies and then return as something else. And in their love story, it's like if Shiva, the god of gods, is telling us the divine loves you too much to let you be stagnant. So that's why he created that movement from the bottom of his heart. As I said earlier, we are both Shiva and Shakti. And that story emphasizes the idea that true self-love involves an acceptance of the entirety of the divine inside of us. That means that both the nurturing and destructive forces are meant to be there. The way I see it, Shiva's journey to understand and embracing all of the aspects of Shakti is a metaphor for the spiritual realization that we all need to accept those parts inside of us. The masculine side of us, the young, it's our cognitive abilities, all the knowledge and the information that we can store. You know, it's our mind. And the feminine side of us, the yin, is our bodies and the way we experience ourselves. This feminine side is our sensation, is our ability to flow through our lives. And our masculine power is the structure through which that flow is possible. They are both 50% of the story. And I feel like it's important to honor and embrace both of them. So when you're looking to be alone in your cave, to reflect, contemplate, or meditate, think about Shiva. Channel his energy. And remember that alone also means all one. And in those moments when you're in the arms of the divine masculine, you can approach God through silence and spaciousness. And when you feel like it's time for you to create something new or to destroy something that doesn't make sense anymore, I invite you to connect yourself to Shakti's energy and let her flow. She'll support you like only she knows how. This story is one way to see the feminine and the masculine energy. I know there's so many other ways to see the feminine and the masculine energy. This is the one that I relate the most with. But I'm curious about you. What did you think about the story? How did it make you feel? Did you relate? What is your story about the feminine and the masculine? Let me know in the comment section. I'm so curious. All right. 
I'll meet you in the next episode, which is an amazing interview with a wonderful woman, Joe Machigo. And in this episode, we'll talk about womb magic and we'll go really deep into her version of the feminine power. So stay tuned. Thank you so much for listening. I appreciate that you're here with me. Please be sure to subscribe, rate, review, and share this episode with people you think might benefit from it. If you need support with your lifestyle and well-being, feel free to reach out to me. It will be my pleasure to help you with an Ayurvedic consultation. You can go to my website, marigolera.com, to book a session with me. Remember, in the wisdom of Ayurveda, self-care is not a luxury, but a sacred responsibility and a journey of nurturing oneself to foster holistic well-being. I wish you an amazing rest of your day. Much love to you. And I'll see you in the next episode.